Okay, so a little bit about uh, the mechanism by which chemical modification, impregnation modification, give the protection to wood. If we were to draw a little diagram that showed, if we're looking at, say, the volume of the cell wall of wood, if you remember from one of my other lectures, that if we changed the moisture content of the wood, we go up to a certain point and then the wood doesn't swell anymore and that point, if we're talking about moisture, is called the fibre saturation point. So what we do with a wood modification is pretty much the same thing except we're not filling the cell wall with wood. Uh, if we're doing a chemical modification with acetic anhydride, we're filling the wood with acetyl groups. And if we're doing an impregnation modification, we're filling the wood with some monomer species that is then polymerized. So we're filling the cell wall up with some material so that there's no room for water. In practice, what we find is that we don't achieve quite the same volume difference. It's not possible to get acetyl groups to go everywhere that water would because acetyl groups are bigger than water is and similarly it's not possible to get monomers to go everywhere that water would because monomers are bigger than the water molecule. So we achieve some level of wood swelling as a result of the modification process. So that basically means that we have a much smaller volume that is now available for the water. So we can get quite close to this, what's called the green volume, the maximum swelling of the wood, but we can't get all the way there. So there's always going to be a little bit of space left in the cell wall for water. But that little bit of space means that the moisture content of the cell wall is below a threshold value by which fungi are able to attack the cell wall. And we don't know the exact figure, but it's somewhere of the order of a 20% moisture content. So 20% of the dry wood mass is moisture that you add. When you get to that level, uh, you will get biological decay processes starting. If you keep below that level, then biological decay doesn't work. So one of the best ways to protect wood from decay is to keep it dry. And that's what these modification reactions are doing. Thermal, mod sorry, not the thermal, the chemical modification and the impregnation modification are keeping the cell wall of the wood below that threshold value. They're keeping the wood dry. And that's how they work. It's a completely passive mechanism. There's no... Um, toxic mechanism involved in those modification processes whatsoever. It's completely passive. And I'll talk about thermal modification separately because there's slightly different issues to consider there. Um, so yeah, thermal modification, the mechanism by which thermal modification protects the wood uh, is it's the same idea in that there's less moisture in the cell wall but in the case of thermal modification, as I've already mentioned, the hemicelluloses are degraded. And the hemicelluloses are the region of the cell wall which is most accessible to water molecules. Uh, and if you degrade the hemicelluloses, then there's, there's less um, ability to absorb the moisture. Whether that involves some sort of chemical um, cross-linking going on in the cell wall, I think it's still open to some debate amongst the scientific community but the net effect is that there's less water in the cell wall. So we have similar properties that we get with impregnation and chemical modification, except we haven't swollen the wood in this case. In, in that case, um, in actual fact, with thermal modification, it shrinks slightly. Um, but it is the same kind of idea. It's a moisture exclusion mechanism that's providing decay resistance and dimensional stability. But you'll notice with thermal modification, it's not as biologically durable as either chemically modified or impregnation uh, modified wood.